Welcome to Space Coast Channel Political Front Show. I want to thank our sponsors, Space Coast Limbo, uh, Pizza Vola Restaurant, and Wild Manti Learning Center. Today, I have a special person here. It's Amy Tibbs. She's a candidate for State Senate Seat 17, District 17. Welcome, Amy. Oh, thank you. So glad to be here. Amy, uh, tell me uh, your background and what makes you qualify for the Senate seat, District 17. Well, Randy, uh, thank you for asking. I have led a life of service. Um, right after high school, I joined the Navy, and I did six years in the Navy. After I got out, we moved here from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. My husband is also was also in the Navy. And I became really involved in our community. I really felt strongly that if you're going to live in a community, you have to make it better. So I worked here at Brevard for clean air, clean water, jobs. There's a lot of things over the, over the years. I've been here 25 years that I've accomplished. And I just really love the community. That's great. Uh, tell me, this Senate seat, what makes a good uh, state senator? I think it's very important to understand that the people elect you and that you need to represent them. I am not taking any PAC money. And so when I get to Tallahassee, the only people I will have to listen to are the citizens. So that makes a big difference from other, other legislators because right now the citizens are not being heard in Tallahassee. For example, we voted for fair dexterous because we did not want gerrymandering. And they gerrymandered. We had to sue and it took six years to get fair dexterous. So this year for the first time, we have fair dexterous on the ballot. Wow. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, what makes a good uh, politician? Well, a good politician is someone who works with many different people. The work I've done in the past here in Brevard County, for example, I worked to bring down the old FPL power plant. It was polluting the, and the pollution was actually 50 miles out. You could measure the death rate. So it was actually killing people up to 50 miles away from the plant. And we worked, I worked for 20 years to bring down that plant. But I worked with um, county commissioners, state legislators, community leaders, we had meetings. A good legislator and a good politician brings people together. And it doesn't matter party label, it doesn't matter where they're from. It's just let's bring people together to fix a problem. What type of community uh, activities besides that you did? Uh... For example, I was on the board of the Marine Resource Council. I've been very active in trying to bring the, the Indian River Lagoon back to health because I'm very concerned about it. I do um, a lot of different boards, recycling. I was on, elected seven years on an advisory board that served as city council. And there I listened to how the people, the people's concerns. So, but my favorite thing I do have to say is I work at the St. Mary's Helping Hands Food Pantry on Friday. Wow, that's great. And we, every Friday we feed people, we give them clothes, and we help people get jobs. So. Amy, I have some more questions for you. One is, what is your major career achievement in, in your life at this point? Most of the time I've worked as community advocate, where it means, which means that you don't get paid, but you work a lot. But for pay, I, had, I worked as a um, career counselor. I worked for the state of Florida and for what was BCC. And what I loved was getting people jobs. My, my great accomplishment was finding out their background and finding a job that they were completely suited for. Because I think that that makes the whole community so much better when people get jobs. But when I wasn't being paid, I would have to say my biggest career um, in my com as a community advocate was in 2004. I stepped up and formed a citizens group that lobbied to pass the endangered lands referendum. I got 100 citizens to volunteer. We got flyers. We walked door to door. And we passed this referendum to buy $60 million worth of land to preserve it, which was then matched with $60 million from the state. So there's a lot of land like the Thousand Islands that was preserved because of my work. And I just, every time I go to visit these parks, I just, it makes me smile. I want to, I want to uh, ask you this question. Um, I'm, a, I'm a veteran, uh, Air Force retired, and I know you're a veteran. Can you tell me what you did in, in the Navy, how long you served, um, what kind of medals or, or, or ribbons you had? A lot of military okay. people like that. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. I went in the Navy, and my first job was up in Newport, Rhode Island. I, I didn't get an A school, so they sent me up for on-the-job training. 
I was on a, a YP, Yard Patrol boat, which is a th three person crew in Newport Harbor. And we would go out every day and we would teach man overboard drills and, and how to maneuver. It was just the most fun. And I loved it. I loved, I learned a lot about how to use a screwdriver and <laughs> how to do navigation. And, and so I became a quartermaster, which is the navigation. I, I studied under this master chief quartermaster, been in the Navy 40 years. And we learned, I taught me how to do the stars and how to navigate and all those things. So that was my shore duty. And then I switched. And when I went to switch, they said, well, you can go overseas. You're a woman. You don't have to go on a ship. And I said, but I joined the Navy to go on a ship. <laughs> so I, he's like, no, you don't have to. I said, yes, I want to. So they sent me to the USS Lexington, which is an aircraft carrier. And it was, I was one of the first, women had only been put on like a year before. So I was part of the early thing. And on there, I was, nav I was in navigation. I worked up on the bridge. And we would go out to sea, and they would come in and practice landing. The air people who were training to be fighter pilots would come in and land. So that was really exciting. I, I really, really enjoyed that. You know, would you agree, um, and I tell people, when you, when you go in the military, you go in as a follower, but when you leave, you leave as a leader. Would you agree with that statement? That is, that is so true. Well, what it does, the military teaches you to work as a community teaches that we're all intertwined and that you cannot let one person fail because we're all going to fail. So I definitely learned a lot of leadership skills. You learn a lot of courage. I mean, when I was on that small boat and the head backed up, I had to crawl under the entire boat down at the bottom wow. to get to it. I mean, you know, this stuff, you know, on, on the um, aircraft carrier, I mean, you learn to do four hours of sleep, three maybe, you know. You learn to push yourself, but, to, but the fact that if you work with other people and take care of them, that, right, that, right. that you can do it. Yes, yeah. yes, it, it is. It's exciting. Let, let me ask you, what makes you the, the, the best candidate for this C-17, Senate C-17 uh, position? Thank you for asking. The citizens of Florida are not being represented up in Tallahassee. They quite frequently tell their legislators what they want. For example, Amendment 1 was passed last year because, in, um, two years ago, because people wanted the state to buy the land south of Lake Okeechobee right. so that they could store the, land, the, the water instead of dumping it into the Indian River Lagoon. The legislators in Tallahassee take lots of money from Big Sugar, who just happens to be south of Lake Okeechobee. So they did not buy the land. One of the things you've got to do is you have to get somebody in Tallahassee who will listen to the people, but also listen to business interests, bring everybody together. You cannot just have one focus. And right now, the focus in Tallahassee is business. That's it. So we just need people who can um, accomplish things by bringing people together. And that's really my big, ta big talent. What's, what is your key uh, platform? What's your top uh, three or four issues that you want to try to get accomplished? as a state senator for Obama. Well, the biggest thing that I'm running on is the Indian River Lagoon. When I moved here, I would take my small children down to the side of the water, and they would wade around it, and you'd see dolphins and pelicans diving. Now, you go down there, and it's dead. Our lagoon is dying. And if we lose our lagoon, we lose our tax base, we lose our way of life. And my grandkids aren't going to be able to go wade in that water because they could lose a leg. So there is a lot that can be done in Tallahassee to save the lagoon. And my um, opponent had, was rated F from Florida Today. They got an yes, F yes, because of their bad votes. They voted um, to not inspect septic tanks, to increase nutrients, to not buy the land. And so if you want people that are going to fix the lagoon, you have to get people who not who will listen. So the lagoon is a big thing. I definitely want to um, bring economic development, and I, I think we need to raise the minimum wage. is a very important thing. And finally, I would really like to legalize marijuana. I think it's time. I'm tired of young people being thrown in, in prison, wasting our tax dollars. We need to do what the other states have done, like Colorado, legalize it, regulate it, tax it, and it, it changes everybody's life. Okay. Once again, Amy, I got a few questions. Who is your hero and why? Um, the first one would have to be Eleanor Roosevelt, because I just really admired during the World War II how she advocated for desegregation. 
and she worked for workers' rights. She would go and visit mines and all that, so she's a huge hero of mine. Another one is Teddy Roosevelt. I really like how he, um, well, I did like how he charged San Juan Hill, but I also <laughs> liked how he did the land preservation. He started the, the national parks and all, because I really am a big, believe, big fan of our National Park Service. And finally, I would have to say Mother Teresa. Definitely, I'm, I'm Catholic and I just really admire what she did to show that, okay, you can't save the world, but you can make a difference to the person next to you. Right. So I think that we can all do something to help somebody else. So those are, those are three of my heroes. I agree, I agree. I like uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, do you believe we should establish trade with Cuba since it's now opening up? Um, that's a great question. I really support um, the recent actions on Cuba. The last 50 years didn't work. We tried to do this and what it did was it separated families and it separated, um, we, we have a lot of common interests. We need to work together on such things as um, terrorism and such things as um, drug trafficking and other things that really make a difference to our whole area. So I'm really in favor and I was very excited to see the first cruise ship stop there about a month ago. My, my grandparents used to go there. They lived in Florida in Clearwater, and they used to go take the boat down there and they'd go dancing yeah. in Cuba. Yeah, yeah they hang out with the rag pad people. So. <laughs> yeah, I think Cuba's going to be a, a good tourist area. Um, I have another question. You know, I grew up in New York City and, and I back in the 70s and 80s, and I knew Donald Trump. I, I knew his stuff in the Daily News and everything. What's your views on the Republican uh, presidential candidate? Uh, Donald Trump? Well, I'm very concerned. As a veteran, I feel very strongly that we need a commander-in-chief who is very calm and makes very good decisions, and I worry about his judgment. I know that there is uh, more than a hundred um, leaders in the national security, Republican leaders in the national security department that are very concerned about him because a president has our, the entire military, you know, right. at his fingertips. He can push a button and they have to fire the missile. There's no, they can't say, well, let me, let me think about this. No, when you have a president and they say push the button, you're going to war. So I'm very concerned what would happen in America with the Trump presidency. You know, uh, Trump talks about uh, he would be great for minorities. Let me ask you this question. Um, what type of opportunities you know, you would do in District 17 to help minorities, black, white, his, his black, Hispanic, and other uh, minorities here and throughout the district? Well, people have really been left behind with this economic boom. Even though there's, it looks like a boom, the cost of living, your house, your food, your, um, a lot of your cost of living has gone up. Wages have stayed stagnant. So like I mentioned before, definitely we need to raise the minimum wage. But we also need to make sure that these um, students, when they leave high school and go to college, that they can afford to get a, a, a great education. So Bright Futures has been cut. It used to pay 100%. Wow. They cut back the amount it pays. Then they cut back the test score. So what's going on is, is children who had tutoring and who had lots of books at home and who, who went to school prepared, they're scoring higher, they're getting bright futures, and these next kids who are struggling, but they're gonna make, make great you know, doctors and lawyers, they're being cut off. So I would raise that, I would raise the test scores back up, and, if you, and then add a um, means-based testing. Because I don't believe if you're a millionaire that your kids should get a free bright futures scholarship. So you start with the education system, then you work on, into the community. We need to make sure that the jobs that Enterprise Florida is encouraging are paying, well-paying jobs. They're well-paying jobs that you can live on. Uh, one of the things I've worked on here in, in, Florida, in Brevard, we've been trying to get a Costco in Brevard, and I've been trying to help to get our city to bring it into town. To, they're actually going to go to Seattle to present to Costco and try to bring it in. Wow. And people don't really know why, but the reason I'm working on it is Costco pays a living wage. So if you don't go to high school, if you're in a high school grad mm -hmm. and you don't go to college, you can go work at Costco and make 45000 a year. Wow, and so they have a higher, they, 
That's why Costco is great. Even though they pay a very good wage, they, they have a higher profit rating and they have less, they have no turnover. So you have to look at living wage is secret. We ended the end of our show. Uh, I want you to tell our viewers, viewers uh, a little bit more about your campaign and your website and anything that we didn't share through this interview. Can you share with our viewers? Thank you. Well, I just really wanted to thank Space Coast Channel's Political Front Show for having me on and you as an interviewer. It's really been a pleasure. pleasure. Also wanted to thank my husband, Steve. Um, we've been married 31 years and he's been a big support to me and we have two children, Brenda and Miranda, and they both went to public schools here and now they're doing very well. My son's a teacher at Cocoa High. Wow. So it's been a real great journey here in Brevard. So, um, just really wanted to ask for your vote, and if you want to find out more about my race, you can go to um, amyforsenate.com and follow me on Twitter, it's at amytid, and you'll really get to know who I am, because I don't pull any punches, I don't take corporate money, I don't take PAC money, so vote for Tid, you'll be glad you did. This is Randy Foster, once again we want to thank uh, State Senate uh, candidate for District 17, Amy Tibbs, for joining us and our viewers on the Space Coast Channel TV. Look for it again on YouTube and tune in for our next candidate uh, that we will be interviewing in the future. Thank you.